Well, you might know Rick Owens for his expensive clothes that your mom doesn't understand, his prison cell looking house filled with mummies and skulls, or for the fact that he thinks he should actually go to the gym instead of buying his clothes. What you might not know about him is the story of how he finessed the fashion industry into making hundreds of millions of dollars as an independent designer. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, a quick little note, my own autumn winter collection is out now. So if you want to support an independent designer and check out my clothes, go to karstencraining.com, link in the bio. Sorry for the shameless self promo, but let's get back into the reason you're here and talk about how the Dark Lord himself tricked the fashion industry and finessed his way around the system. And no, the reason wasn't because he paid off a bunch of rappers to name drop his brand in songs. The real reason is a lot more complex. And if you're interested in succeeding in the fashion industry, you might want to listen up as it might be able to help you in the future. Now to start off, I want to recommend watching this video I previously made. And this video gives a little bit of backstory on how the fashion industry works and how it specifically takes advantage of smaller designers. But if you don't want to go back and forth video to video, let me give you a quick rundown of what I talk about. When you are a smaller brand, you have a factory make your clothes that you don't own, and then you usually sell your clothes to distributors or retailers. And these retailers or distributors that sell your clothes are going to usually have pretty high and unrealistic standards, especially for smaller companies. These standards lead to smaller companies having trouble with production and over time losing money and usually barely scraping by. This is because the retailers are owned by mega corporations which also own a lot of the big fashion houses. And while they are actually profiting off of the designer's work, usually leads to the smaller designers struggling. So eventually these big companies that own the big fashion houses as well as the distributors go to the smaller designer who is struggling and ask for them to join the corporation either by selling it or selling a majority share as they'll help with the production side. So they can get the order of clothes to the distributor distributor on time. Smaller designers usually give in and sell their company or a majority share of their company and this leads to the actual designer not really making very much money on their own company and on their own work. And this has happened to a lot of designers. A few notable examples are Margiela, Helmut Lang, Jill Sander. The fashion system is built in a way to pressure smaller independent designers and to get them to eventually sell their company. Rick Owens, however, is one of the few designers to have ever finessed this system, and now he generates hundreds of millions of dollars a year, which is enough for him to buy a second century Egyptian sarcophagus. It's the only flex I've seen that would make Indiana Jones say, that belongs in a museum. Now to understand how Rick was able to finesse this system, we have to know the background of who Rick Owens is. Rick got his start cutting patterns for Michelle Lamy in Los Angeles, and he was almost 40 or in his late 30s when he actually started his brand. He started off by only selling to one distributor, which was Maxfield in Los Angeles. Pretty much just showed up to Maxfield one day with duffel bags of his clothes and asked if he could sell them there. And the owner of Maxfield said yes. Maxfield is one of the distributors that was privately owned at the time. It wasn't part of a major corporation. And so they were very lenient with Rick and what he put in the store. And also the owner helped him reach out to a couple of other smaller independent boutiques. And so in a few boutiques across the United States, Rick Owens began selling his clothes. It was years before he ever had a fashion show or even wanted one. Not because he thought he wouldn't be successful or that no one would order his clothes, because he actually sold in those stockists that he was in quite well and was selling more and more every year. But because fashion shows are A, expensive, and Rick was pretty conservative when it came to spending money, and besides being expensive, fashion shows also open you up to getting a lot of orders. Which is a good thing, however, Rick's production was all in LA from a very small team at the time. If he did have a show, the orders would be overwhelming, and he knew he would sort of fall into the system and get trapped. And instead, Rick grew very slowly and steadily over the years, with more people becoming interested in his brand over time. Leather jackets were his item that initially started getting a lot of traction. People loved his leather jackets, and eventually Kate Moss, who was an extremely famous model at the time, was photographed one of Rick's jackets, and that photograph made its way into Vogue. It was in the early 2000s when Vogue came to Rick Owens and said to him that they wanted to sponsor him so that he could have runway shows. And they would pay for the whole show, 
All Rick had to do was present his clothes. Rick was extremely hesitant at first, but eventually gave in because they would pay for it and help him get press and publicity. It's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity that would allow him to get on his feet with a lower chance of risk. However, he knew that his current production couldn't handle all the orders. And so what Rick Owens did is he went to search out to find a particular factory to work with so that he could handle global distribution. And eventually he found a factory in Italy, in Concordia, and this is actually the same factory he uses today. Now Rick formed a long-term relationship with this factory, and most designers today use different factories for different reasons. Season by season they may use four or five different factories, switching up the factories year by year. But Rick didn't do this, he only used one factory. And he actually ended up buying that factory in Concordia after some time. So Rick Owens did his first collection and most of the items were produced in that one factory in Concordia, rather than in separate factories all across the world, which is what most designers do. It's super important that he bought this factory, so this is how he started finessing the fashion system. The fashion system puts pressure on independent designers by making sure the designer does not control their means of production or their own means of distribution. When an independent designer doesn't have complete control of their means of production, it means that oftentimes their orders are late. If you've ever worked in the fashion industry, you always know that orders are almost always going to be late. These factories are often producing multiple batches for multiple people. Then the retailer that the designer is supposed to get the clothes to almost always has standards or clauses written into the contract where if the items are late by a certain time, they deduct money from the designer's profit. However, Rick using the same factory and producing the bulk of his collections in that factory, and when he bought it, it meant he had 100% control over it. And when you have 100% control over your factory, you don't have to worry about other people having orders, and you can make sure you have a higher chance of getting all your items in on time. Another way Rick saved money in the early years, continues to save money today, is by reusing a lot of the same materials and fabrics over and over again. Using textiles is expensive and getting new ones and using a lot of different types is very expensive. However, if you're using 10 different types of fabric a season instead of 100 for a season, and seven of those fabrics are ones that you used last year, you're saving a huge amount of money. And this is what Rick does. He uses the same fabrics, the same hardware, and other materials so that he can save money. And we actually don't recognize that as cheap. We recognize that as motifs or a design language or a consistency. And it actually strengthens his brand while also saving him a significant amount of money. And so Rick was saving all this money and was able to buy the factory and it meant he had complete control over his manufacturing and could avoid being late and having to pay fees to distributors and therefore he was way more profitable. With this money that Rick saved, he eventually was able to use the money to open his own store in Paris. This was an extremely important move for Rick because this is where you see Rick start to take over not only his manufacturing, but now his own distribution. Remember, the fashion industry is able to exploit smaller and independent designers for their own manufacturing or their own distribution. And when Rick opened his store, it meant that he was starting to control some of his own distribution. Now, this is a slow process, and Rick today continues to sell through retailers. And I don't think there is a point where he won't sell through retailers. Just him being able to distribute any of his own garments is a huge mitigation of risk. If Rick for some reason has less stores wanting to buy from him one year, or they buy less of a certain item, he can still sell in his own stores even if the distributors aren't buying as much. And the risk is more diversified and he doesn't have to worry about stockists not wanting to stock him or not wanting to stock more profitable items he has the ability to distribute by himself. And while opening one store didn't really diversify that risk a whole lot, it was an important stepping stone. And today, now he has 13 stores, which is a significant portion of his sales. Rick also did a lot to make it more appealing to buy from himself rather than a stockist. He turned all of his stores into experiences that made people want to go there. I don't think there's any retail establishment in high fashion that is quite highly as regarded as the Rick store is. Maybe Dover Street Market, but Rick Owens is one of the top shopping experiences that you can go to. You wanna to go to the Rick store because not only can you see all the cool Rick clothes, 
but you can eat the Rick candy, you get the Rick water, you get to see the Rick statue and even sit on him. The retail experience you receive when you go to a Rick Owen store is a force to be reckoned with. In terms of turning a profit and a significant source of sales coming from these stores. And it makes it so that you want to buy your Rick items from the Rick store rather than a stockist. So at this point, Rick Owens has become his own manufacturer and his own distributor. And this has meant that after almost 30 years, he's been able to stay independent. And he was able to finesse the system and get around this when McQueen, Helmut Lang, and Margiela all had to eventually sell and take a fraction of the profit that Rick Owens does. It's an important economic lesson that in the system, being able to control as much of your own manufacturing as you can and as much of your own distribution that you can is really important to your own success. While you probably can't open your own retail store or buy your own factory at this point if you're watching this video, there's a lot of things you can be doing to strengthen your own output in both of those areas. When Rick started off his runway, no one expected him to have the same factory year after year. It eventually led to his own success unlike anything else. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Rick Owens, I have another video on this channel about his design, his sort of design language and his inspiration. And again, if you want to check out my autumn winter collection is out now. I have a few cool pieces. Again, my name is Carson Craning. Thank you so much for watching this video and I am signing off.